Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Previous videos, we set up VS Code so that you can, you know, type and run Python code in there and learn how to use Python. But there is another method called Jupyter Notebooks. And when you see the name, a lot of people first ask, well, I know there's a planet called Jupiter. Why is this misspelled? And it's because they're using the name Jupiter here as sort of a portmanteau or whatever that word is for combinations of sounds for the three languages which you can use in the notebooks. And those are Julia, Python, and R, all of which are data science related languages. Now, assuming you've installed Anaconda, you already have uh, Jupyter Notebook, so you can just open up Anaconda if you already have it down in your dock or Launchpad or whatever on a Mac, you know, you can open it from there. And once um, Anaconda opens up, then you can just click Launch where you see the uh, Jupyter Notebook card. Same basic idea in Windows. You can open um, Anaconda from your Start menu. If you have Jupyter Notebook on there, you can skip that and just go straight to clicking the Jupyter Notebook icon, and it'll open it right up from there without going through Anaconda first. Now, when Jupyter Notebook opens, it actually opens in your web browser, your default web browser. And at first, it just shows a bunch of folder names which might seem kind of confusing, but it's because, you know, you can open up things from these folders and bring them into the notebook. Now, before you create a notebook, you may want to think about where you want to store it because it tends to be stored in whatever directory folder you happen to be in at the moment. Um, I tend to use OneDrive for a lot of this stuff because, you know, I can get to it from any computer device in the world, really. But again, that's just an example, not a requirement. You can store your Jupyter Notebooks wherever you like. If you were going to put it out on OneDrive, what you'd want to do is navigate out to that folder, you know, I'll, and here I can just click on OneDrive to get out there. And once I'm in that folder, I can tell because um, it shows up here in the address bar and also near the top of the window right here. And now that I'm in OneDrive, I can create a subfolder there by coming over here and clicking New Folder. That's going to create a folder named Untitled Folder right here. See, it says seconds ago, so I know that's it. All right, now I don't want to keep it that title, so I'll click a little check mark, click Rename up here, and rename the folder to whatever I want. Jupyter Notebook seems like a good name. Click Rename, and now there's that folder. In order to make sure my Notebook goes in there. I open that folder before I create it. Now I can see up at the top here that I'm in that subfolder, which is where I want to put my notebook. So now I can click New Python 3, and that'll create a new empty Python notebook inside that folder. And in there, I can write Python code and do other things as we'll discuss next. And again, that's just an example. Feel free to create your notebooks wherever you like. They'll behave the same uh, regardless of where you put them. So uh, let's just go ahead and start actually working inside a notebook now. Okay, when a new notebook opens, you see one cell. This thing's called a cell. And you can have any number of cells inside a notebook. And in the little toolbar above the cards, you see the word code here, which tells you that you can write Python code in this card. Now I can do something real simple like one plus one, but note that when you press enter, it doesn't show you the result. And that's because pressing enter doesn't run the code here. To run the code, you either have to click this run button here right above the card, or you can click the cell menu and run cells from there. Or you can use keyboard shortcut and to see what those are, click help and choose keyboard shortcuts. And then you'll see there's some um, keyboard shortcuts for lots of different things, but pressing control enter runs the selected cell. Sometimes the enter key is called the return key. So if I click inside here and press control plus enter or control plus return, it runs the code and I see the output of two because one plus one equals two. 
Now I can change the code if I just replace one plus one with a more complete statement like print hello there world in quotes. Again, I can run the code and I see the output, which is um, just the literal string inside the quotes. All right, so run, we'll run the code um, right here and there. Now you can use code that you didn't type in there. For example, I can open up VS Code in that test.py program I was practicing with and copy and paste all of it or some of it or whatever out of there and I'll paste it in where this code used to be. And again, if I run it by clicking run, it runs all the code and I see the three print statements doesn't take any wooden nickels, the 10, and the username. Okay, so same as running it in VS Code. Now, of course, that may bring up the question, well, which method's better? And actually, neither method is better. So just use whichever one you're most comfortable with. Later on, when you have some expertise and you're writing real apps, you might prefer to use one or the other, depending on what you're building or what you're using. But for now, it's sufficient just to know that you can use either VS Code or Jupyter Notebooks to write Python code. Another nice thing about using a Jupyter Notebook is that you can put regular text and photos and videos in with your code. And to put those in there, you use a popular language called Markdown, which is actually used in a number of other services like Git and Steemit, which you may or may not have heard of. Not important. The main idea is that it allows you to write documentation in with your code and share it with the world if you want. So you have both the code out there and also a description of what's going on. The markdown is just there to let you do more than just plain text. All right, so to use markdown, you can insert another cell. I'll choose insert cell below, so it goes in underneath my code. Now up here, it still shows code. But if I'm gonna write markdown, I have to change that to markdown. So now it knows in this cell, I'm gonna put in markdown, not Python code. Then I can just type in Markdown, though I kind of prefer using VS Code for Markdown. Um, and I already have some here in this file called readme.md. It's just a sample, really. But if I preview it in VS Code, you can see how it's supposed to look. And you can see there's pictures and a link and text and all that. So I'm going to copy this right out of VS Code, this MD file. Copy the whole thing go back over to my notebook, paste it in where that markdown box is. And at first I just see the code, but as with Python code, if I click run, then it executes the code and now it looks like markdown. Or I should say a finished document with, you know, pictures and links and a video and so forth. All right, now I'm not gonna attempt to teach a markdown right here, right now. I don't think this is the time or place. I do, however, have a free one-hour course that'll get you through it pretty quick using VS Code. And I'll put a link to that in the page for this particular video. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to get there. One last thing I want to talk about is saving your uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Here you can see this one is already auto-saved with a name of Untitled. That's not a very good name, so I'm going to click that name and I'm going to type in a new name and click rename. And now this has a more meaningful uh, file name, first notebook, which will make it easier for me to find. All right, it's still going to that original folder, which is my uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Now you can see up there I have some unsaved changes. To save everything, I just click this Save button over here, and that'll save it instantly so it's up to date. Okay, so just don't forget to do that. Now these checkpoints are just auto-save checkpoints in case you forget to save. Basically, try not to do that. Just try to save once in a while. But if you do make a change, I'll just type, make a little arbitrary change here. Again, if I try to exit now, it, it warns me I, I changed without saving my changes. So again, I can just click Save. And then when I close the tab or the browser or whatever, I don't get any warnings because all my changes are saved. And after you close the browser, you might see this Jupyter Notebook kernel thing. You can just close that too. Okay, now to get back to that in the future, just do like you would with any other app, really. Just open up Jupyter Notebook, 
same as the first time, but this time go to your folder. Again, I put mine in OneDrive, Jupyter Notebook, so I'd open those folders first. Click First Notebook, and there it is. Now, if you try to change the uh, markdown here, it won't work. You'll have to double click that somewhere inside there. And when you do, it should turn back into the markdown code, and then you can edit to your heart's content. All right, and again, it, you will see auto save going on up there sometimes, but it's always a good idea to click save. It you know it takes a second, and save it so you know it's current. And then when you're done editing your markdown, click run, and it'll go back to the uh, rendered content, and it has no effect on the other. All right, and just close up your browser like before. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started using Jupyter Notebooks. My name is Alan Simpson. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you around the net. Thanks again. Bye-bye now.